Florida, famously, is one of the worst affected areas when it comes to invasive species. If you look hard enough, you can find them almost everywhere, as there's plenty in the water, on the land, and in the air. One of the main reasons why so many non-native creatures can survive here is Florida's unique climate. Most of Florida's invasive species wouldn't survive in other parts of the USA, but because Florida is so warm, it's the perfect place for many invasive species to thrive. As I've covered in a very recent video, a lot of these invasive species are reptiles, but surprisingly there are also plenty of invasive mammals. Some of these creatures have a massive negative impact on the ecosystem, whereas others have little to no impact. Of course there are very famous examples of invasive species in Florida, but there are also some that go under the radar. In this video I will be covering some of the more controversial introduced species, as I'll be going through three non-native primates that can be found in Florida. And for our first species we can head over to Asia, as we have Rhesus macaque. Now this macaque is a species of old world monkey that today has a massive distribution. They're mostly found throughout South South, Central and Southeast Asia, and throughout this range it has many recognised subspecies. It has the widest geographic range of all non-human primates, and can be found in a variety of habitats and altitudes. Famously these monkeys do very well in urban areas, as they are more than happy to beg and steal food. This of course leads to conflict with humans, and in some rare cases it can lead to fatalities. In March 2018, one of these monkeys entered a home in the Indian state of Odisha and kidnapped a baby. It's unknown why the macaque did this, but unfortunately later the baby was found dead in a well. These monkeys are known to be aggressive and will attack people, but behaviour such as this is unusual and is also very rare. Although this monkey does have a very large native range, this doesn't include Florida. That's because as you can guess they were introduced into Florida by humans, and the first introduction happened way back in the 1930s. This was when the manager of a glass bottom boat operation decided to release six of these macaques on an island in the Silver River. This was to attract tourists to his boat tours, but what this manager might not have known are that Reese's macaques are very good swimmers. In the wild they are known to swim regularly, as it allows them to travel from island to island and access new sources of food. This is why it was far too easy for them to escape this island and then find themselves in the Floridian wilderness. Their population soon increased rapidly, and later on in 1948, an additional six Reese's macaques were released. This is because the monkeys had become very popular with tourists, and having more of them around was good for business. At their peak there were around 400 individuals in Florida, but private trapping and removal efforts led to there being only 190 macaques by 2015. When it comes to removing invasive species, it's often easier to remove the uglier creatures. This is because usually people are very happy to get rid of them and see them as a very evil species to have around. When it comes to removing these macaques it gets a lot more complicated, because not only are they good for business, but they're also loved by many people around Florida. As they're very furry and human-like, people seem to fall in love with them, but they can have massive negative impacts on the ecosystem. In the Florida Keys areas, many Reese's macaques destroyed red mangroves, leading to massive vegetation loss and shoreline erosion. They of course also compete with native species for food and resources, and they can also be a risk to us humans. Some of the monkeys in Florida are harboring herpes. Around 25% of them have herpes B, which can be fatal to humans. 4 to 14% of them were shedding the virus orally by mouth, meaning a bite could transmit the virus. As I've already covered, Reese's macaques can be very aggressive towards humans, and if one of these macaques harbouring herpes B were to bite someone, it could prove to be fatal. It is a very bad idea to keep these monkeys in Florida, as they're both a danger to people and the native wildlife, but because these primates are so loved by tourists, the idea of removing these macaques is very controversial, and unfortunately many Floridians are against it. But for our next species we can head south to both Central and South America, as we have the squirrel monkeys. Now these new world monkeys are a lot smaller than the Rhesus macaque, and this means in their native range they are a target for far more predators. They always have to keep an eye out for danger, and this means that they have a more skittish nature. Now throughout their native range there are a few different species, and multiple subspecies. These often look very similar to each other, but do have very subtle differences. In the wild, to help them keep safe from predators, they will often move and feed with other monkeys. They often associate with capuchin monkeys, and also the red-backed bearded saki. When they do congregate with these other species, they are usually found in large groups, because just like many other primates they are social creatures, and tend to be found in groups of up to 40 to 50 members. Although this monkey is found in the Americas, its range doesn't spread into the US, and definitely doesn't spread into Florida. That's because once again they were introduced into Florida, but this introduction wasn't exactly successful. It's unknown exactly where and when these introductions took place, but at one point they were 
thought to be five separate populations in Florida. Today, only one of these populations still remains, and this is in the Fort Lauderdale area, at the Bonnet House Museum and Gardens. The existing population was reported to have come from two pairs of squirrel monkeys that were released from a social club in the area. This introduction was thought to have taken place in the 1970s, and by 1988, there were thought to be 43 individuals. These monkeys haven't exactly been thriving in Florida, and there are quite a few reasons behind this. These monkeys struggled with cold winters, and some were also privately trapped and removed. In the Silver Springs area, they were also outcompeted by the previously mentioned rhesus macaques, and they really stood no chance. These tiny monkeys can have a negative impact on the ecosystem, but because they are so small in number today, and also because they are very small creatures, they have little to no noticeable impact, and eventually they might disappear from Florida altogether. But for our final species, we can head to Eastern Africa, as we have the vervet monkey. Now this primate is a mostly herbivorous monkey, with striking black faces and grey fur. As I've covered on the channel before, they also have other body parts that are very striking, but I don't think I can show them on YouTube. As there are many primates in Africa, it can be very easy to overlook the vervet monkey, but really this monkey is quite spectacular, as they are noted for having human-like characteristics, and behaviour-wise they are very close to us humans, compared to other similarly sized primates. They have human-like characteristics such as hypertension, anxiety, and social and dependent alcohol use, and this of course makes them very complex creatures. In the wild they're found in large social groups, usually numbering from 10 to 70 individuals. Of course they often fall prey to many of the predators in Africa, and even their fellow primates the baboons will hunt them. To help keep the whole troop aware of predators, they do have very distinct alarm calls, and these alarm calls are different depending on the predator. <coughs> They are known to have at least four acoustically distinct alarm calls, and these are for leopards, eagles, pythons, and baboons. If you were hunted by these predators, you may want to leave Africa altogether, and that's what some lucky vervet monkeys have done. Of course, this was not a natural migration, as the vervet monkeys in Florida are actually escapees. Because these monkeys have very human-like characteristics, they are often studied and researched, and in the 1940s in Fort Lauderdale, some of these vervet monkeys escaped a research facility. These monkeys soon thrived in the surrounding areas, and as of 2020, there are thought to be around 40 vervet monkeys in the area. These monkeys have become very popular with the local people, and are almost treated like local celebrities and often appear on TV. Although it's strictly illegal, people still feed them, and they really are enjoying their lives in their new home. Of course, these monkeys do have a negative impact on the ecosystem, by both competing with native species, and also by feeding on them. Luckily, because their population is so small, they don't have a noticeable impact, and quite honestly, there are bigger problems in Florida. If they were to be removed once again it would be very controversial, because the local people really have fallen in love with these primates. Let me know what you think of these non-native primates in the comments down below, and there is also one other non-native primate that can be found in the US, and if you know it you can leave a comment down below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.